And here we go. He's going to push into this. He's got the Vipers coming up behind it. It's just now being revealed. A little bit of a choke point. A lot of AoE damage going down, but Blinding Clouds and Abducts combining to bring the teeth of Kalash's army up front to bear, and there's just nothing behind this. My name is Diego, I play under the ID Kalizer and I'm from Brazil. I play StarCraft because I feel like it's the game that suits me the most. I tried getting into other games before, but I, couldn't, I didn't have as much fun practicing it as I did with StarCraft. I didn't really feel that drive to improve myself as much as I did in this game. Back when I was in Brazil, I was just starting um, on this path where I was playing a lot of games and my mother didn't really approve it because you know, it was something new, it was unusual, but my dad was really supportive and even if it was a little bit weird, he, w he thought it was uh, impressive that I was uh, dedicating myself so much to this and they gave me their full support. I moved from Brazil at a pretty turbulent time for my family. Um, they were all moving to Florida actually from Brazil because of personal reasons. So I was already planning on moving there. But it was at the same time I uh, went, I was going to WCS season one for the first time to play in the Premier League. And after that, I got an offer from Roots to live at their house in California, which is pretty far from Florida. It was quite a big commitment to stay that away from uh, my family and I was really happy. I, I really wanted that actually. I wanted to give a shot at this thing, you know, going full time and everything. So going there was probably what started everything. I don't think I would be where I am today if I hadn't gotten their invitation to practice there. StarCraft is a real-time strategy PC game that has many similarities to chess and poker. It combines the elements of strategy, intuition, and speed to make it one of, if not the most difficult games of all time. It's played one versus one competitively worldwide, and over $30 million have been awarded to its best gamers since its birth. The original StarCraft was released in 1998 and has been a cultural phenomenon and national sport in South Korea for almost 20 years. Since the release of StarCraft II in 2010, it has grown to be one of the biggest and long-lasting esports worldwide. The game consists of three different races which are asymmetric, Terran, 
Zerg, and Protoss. Terran is the human race that includes large numbers of biological infantry units and massive mechanical units. A good Terran player relies on a balance of strategy and multitasking to outmaneuver and catch their opponent off guard. Zerg is the alien bug race that relies on conquering as much territory on the map as fast as possible and overwhelming their opponent with a massive swarm of units. Zerg players rely on mechanical skill and intuition. Protoss is a highly advanced alien race that relies primarily on strategy and micromanagement control of their units. Good Protoss players have a variety of timing attacks that give them advantages at specific points of the game when their army is likely to be more powerful than their opponent's army. Protoss players generally have less units than Terran or Zerg, but their sheer power allows them to fight head-to-head -head with larger armies. To win a match of StarCraft, you must mine minerals and gas efficiently to create a stronger army than your opponent and destroy all of your opponent's buildings. But it rarely gets to this point. As soon as one player feels like they won't be able to win the game, they type GG, meaning good game, and concede the match as a sign of respect to their opponent. Generally, games can last anywhere between about 4 minutes and 40 minutes. They can be won in the early stages of the game by surprising your opponent with an attack they aren't ready for. This can also be called a build order loss because a player's planned strategy is countered by their opponent. If the game makes it past the 6 or 7 minute mark, one of the main goals is to limit your opponent's resources by attacking their workers mining or by destroying your opponent's main bases. This allows you to gain an economic lead and create a stronger army than your opponent to fight them head on and take the victory. Since South Koreans have been completely dominant in the history of StarCraft, the tournament structure separates South Koreans from the rest of the world. In the world circuit, there are four WCS or World Championship Series that lead into BlizzCon Global Finals, where eight South Koreans take on eight players from the rest of the world to find out who is the best StarCraft player at the end of the year. Kelezer has been a professional gamer in StarCraft II since 2013, and 2017 has been Kelezer's most successful year by far. He has evolved to become a top contender in the scene having two round of eight finishes at Dreamhack Austin and Yongkoping, and a round of four finish at Dreamhack Valencia. Getting to this point certainly took a lot of time and determination, as things weren't always this way for the Brazilian hero. Yeah, it was a very different experience when I moved to the Root House. Um, I had never lived without my parents before. I did live alone for like a few months. They had to travel, but it was very different, you know. It was people that I kind of knew online, but I never had met before. So maybe at first it was a little unusual getting adjusted to. But just in like a little bit of time, I felt like they were already family and we got so close that I felt the same. My name is Dong Won Shin, also known as Root Hydra. I played StarCraft for nine years professionally, StarCraft mode for uh, seven years and three years for StarCraft 2. Uh, now I've retired from uh, pro gamer and I'm living in dead life. My role model in the root house was always Hydra. 62 army supply against 20 at the moment as little bow stalkers are being ravaged. He knows it, he knows it's done. GG Hydra 4 to 2 is able to win the championship. I didn't see him at first when I moved there because he was in Toronto, I believe, for WCS. But when he came back, he was the person that I took the longest to get close to. But when I did, he was always like, he was my older brother, kind of, and I always looked up to him. I can call him younger brother as well. He had so much experience in StarCraft, and even in life, I felt that he taught me, even if he didn't like, talk to me about it, I felt like I learned so much from him, so that definitely makes him my role model. I really wanted to ask 
uh, my friends to come to my wedding to Korea, but you know the distance was too far, and it was not easy for them to come from just my wedding. So I I just casually asked Diego about coming to my wedding, and he was like, "Yeah, for sure, I'll go there." I thought he was making just you know jokes, but yeah, he really came to my wedding. to Korea because I wanted to get better. I felt like I was stuck in the game and I needed like an extra something to leverage me to the next level. Korea is a great country. I feel like uh, the food is really nice and the weather it can be really good as well. So I enjoy a lot. The people are generally nice, besides the language barrier, of course. I've been practicing the same as the previous WCSs, um, just mostly ladder and uh, focusing on my weakest matchups and preparing little strategies. And I think that if I just keep the same training regime that I kept for the previous LCS, I think I can get a good show and guarantee a spot of BlizzCon. I think Diego is a hard practicing player and when he loses, he gets upset, kind of upset, and that makes Diego play uh, more and he spent kind of hard uh, time in 2016. So after that, I think that made Diego play more and more. Yeah, I think my time in uh, Korea and for that part also China, I felt like I learned a few things and uh, it was definitely helpful for my current preparation for Trimac Montreal. After Kelezer's loss to Snood at the third stop of 2017 at DreamHack Valencia, he was ranked fifth in the yearly standings. However, he was only guaranteed a top eight spot to represent Brazil in the BlizzCon Global Finals if he made it past the round of 16th at the fourth and final stop of DreamHack Montreal. Since I left Korea, I've been practicing a lot at the Root House. I got a lot of practice with True. Actually, he was staying there, so yeah, I think strategically I'm ready for this one. Honestly, I, I don't really go into tournaments with a lot of expectations because it's just a mentality that I have. That I don't really want to let myself down. But if I get like a top 16, I'll already be happy because it's going to kind of secure my spot from this spot. I think the scariest players for me are Need, Special, uh, Nurture, and especially Showtime now. Uh, considering how well he did in the U Challenger for this tournament, so those are very scary players for me to face. I think maybe Lee will win for his third WCS in this year.
Yeah, Diego. Camera. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good job, buddy. What a game. Uh, <laughs> I feel very excited, man. Uh, you must feel relieved, eh? Yeah, they were really tough games. Uh, I was very surprised. I thought it would be a lot smoother, but he proved to be a, a very worthy opponent. And, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I underestimated him a little. I think, yeah, probably the most intense series I've played. Uh, versus Harrison was pretty intense, but it was more like the games were over because of the strategies I lost, so it was yeah. pretty fast. I was a little upset. I think I could have prepared better. The last game I tried to improvise a build, but I did it really wrong and it turned out really bad. Yeah. I can only prepare better for the next series, right? Yeah, exactly. Kellizer must now face the German juggernaut Showtime in the round of 16. By winning this match, his dreams of going to BlizzCon would come true, but it wasn't going to be an easy win for the Brazilian hope. I'm a little tired, but besides that, I prepared a lot for Showtime and I hope I can uh, bring it to the table. You had some build order losses against Farscom yesterday. Is there anything you will do differently versus Showtime? Mm. Well, I'm gonna work more on my strategies. I have a little bit of time and I wanna study more what Showtime did. I already saw some of his games, but I think there's a lot more than I can put into the series, so I'll prepare more than I did for Hearthstone. Uh, if you get round of eight, you'll face Snoot or Haas. Who would you prefer to play and why? <laughs> I prefer to play Haas because he's, Snoot is a 10 times better player. I just hope everyone cheers for me. Uh, last time I was in Montreal, even though I lost in the first round, everyone still chanted my name and cheered for me so hard. So Diego, Kellagod, as everyone calls him, Actually, I feel like we missed out on him. He contacted, or his friend contacted us about joining the team, but we missed out because I think they got scooped up by, uh, by Ruth, and then every, the rest is history. Lower tier Terrans, I feel like even have bu better builds than him, but his decision making and understanding of the game is just so good that it doesn't matter. Showtime seems very, not stern, but very like deprived of emotion. He's very serious. Yeah, I'll say the same thing. He's the kind of player that you will never count out, no matter how uh, his recent performance has been, because he's just a machine and he's just so solid. This is going to be one hell of a series. This is definitely not an easy round of 16 matchup for Showtime. It could have been better. We've had, we've had some blown out 3-0s. I don't see this one being one of them, even though I would say on paper Showtime is the heavy favorite. And they've got that history. Yeah. And Kalizer just has that kind of surprising, like, again, like I said, it, it, it's almost every time he's matched up with someone, we're always like, yeah, Kalizer's good. He's been what a surprise this year, but never talking about him as the favorite. You never do, you never do. And in this one, it's the same. And that gets a little bit scary. I mean, even the fans voting there, I, I don't disagree yeah. with them. 72 for Showtime, 20 for Kalizer. But be aware of the fact that Kalizer is here to ruin dreams. He did it before. To my right, we have the German Macro King. An absolute force, formal champion. I don't think I need to say any more. And on the other side, we got probably inarguably the strongest, the most persistent and consistent StarCraft II player Brazil have, has ever produced. Ladies and gents, it's time for Brazil versus Germany, Germany versus Brazil. Let's welcome Showtime and Kalizer.
Yorick for a Reaper with this to get scouting information, which can actually end up yeah, hurting him. That's cool. He needs as many Marines as he can get right now to deal with uh, this Oracle if that Boodle Mine doesn't slim dunk it. Overpowered, Todd. When you can see it's a hallucination, your units don't even shoot him. GG Kelleser goes up two to zero against the German Protoss, showing that prime form that this Terran mastermind has been in all year long. The third game, I still wanted to do like kind of a cheeky build because I wanted to sneak in a, a, a win so I could settle the series because I knew Showtime was really good and even though I beat him in macro, I thought he could just like get it together and, and crush me after. So I, I, yeah, I was trying to get an easy win. So well, Kalazo knows he needs to go for he the fight. Showtime so. knows that he needs to run back. He's gonna try to force build his way back. Reinforce with more units to make sure he doesn't lose the game right there. And if then Kalazo keeps chasing with these stims. Though once these Colossi turn around, they're just gonna kill everything with one volley. Another great disruptor shot. And here come the Templar. They don't have enough energy for Storm though, so they're, they're just chilling. And Kalazo's army's dead anyway. GG. Showtime gets on the board. First, I messed, I messed up my SUV timing. I was sending the SUV and uh, it went to the wrong path. And then he also went for a proxy gate, which was an unusual response. And it was fine. I kind of messed up my build a little bit and then with the push, it was all over. After Game 4, Showtime had all of the momentum in the series. It was starting to look like maybe Kelezer's hard work training in Korea wasn't paying off, and he was on the brink of elimination from the tournament, with his dream of going to BlizzCon fading away.
realize how much I meant until after the game ended. Like that's how focused I was. That while the game was running, I wasn't thinking about any of that. I was only thinking on winning. And when I did, that's when it all came to me. Like yeah, I made it to BlizzCon. You know, I took down Showtime, and this is it. You know, everything from now on is a step forward. As he shuts down the robotics facilities once again. It GG's Paul Kellizer advances forward once again. Congratulations, finally, we saw one Terran advance on the main stage. Uh, I'm, I, no words for me right now. <laughs> so first two games, it was, it, it, you actually made it look like you, you were going to dominate him. But then again, there were great counters from Showtime from game three, four. And then the last one was just absolutely, absolutely brilliant with the drops, the harassments and, and the multi-prongs. It was brilliant. Yeah. Um... After the first two games, I was very careful to not be too overconfident because I know how strong Tobias is as a player, and I could easily lose 3-2 from 2-0, like it's, he's that strong. So I tried to get some easy wins with some cheeky strategies, but he was uh, too prepared for them. So uh, last words to all the Terrans out there. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll try to represent the Terrans, and if I may, I, I would like to give a word to the people of Montreal. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this has been a great year for me so far, my best one in my entire career. And last year I was here in GMAC Montreal and I remember practicing so hard, like maybe 60, 70 games a day because I really wanted to do well in my last tournament. I wanted to advance from the round of 32. And unfortunately I lost to Violet in the first round. It was very heartbreaking for me, but I was kind of like weeping a little bit, leaving the stage, and everyone just started chanting my name, and I was so moved that I couldn't like, I had to turn my face away because I started crying, so. Yeah, thanks, man. This is Kelizer made it to the round of eight where he'd be defeated by Snoot 3-1, but he accomplished his dream of representing Brazil on the world stage at the WCS Global Finals playoffs. He proved himself as a worthy StarCraft II pro gamer on this day, and in the future people will know him as a true challenger instead of the up-and-comer that he was. Most people don't realize, but... I have so many like passionate Brazilian fans and they always leave good messages and they're so kind to me that I feel like even if I didn't have all the support from from the other players and from my team I feel like maybe they could have done it you know maybe they could have sent me into where I am now because that's how good they are to me so I really want to thank all of them I feel like I learned a lot traveling um, in this in this career. So I feel like I learned a lot with life as well. And maybe it'll just make me a little bit more mature going into other paths in the future. I don't know how long I'll be doing this, so I'm just taking it day by day. <laughs>